you, you're recording. You just getting my consent. There we go. Yep. All right. You got it. Uh, I'm consenting. All right. Thank you very much. We'll call the meeting of the Baltimore City Board of Ethics uh, to order for Wednesday, December 14, 2022, times of 2 12 p.m. Uh, we are present here at City Hall. Uh, so we'll call the meeting to order and uh, we will go out of order here uh, to our business, um, to our new business, Section 7 as we have uh, we, we have a presentation and that would be the ropes and gray LLP pro bono services gift solicitation waiver request by the Baltimore City Law Department. We are joined uh, by Deputy City Solicitor Thompson. Thank you for being here and thank you Ms. Williams from the mayor's office for being present as well. Thank you Ms. Yeah. Thompson. Floor is yours. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Board, um, and I appreciate you all hearing this matter. Um, this is uh, this is a request for the Baltimore City Law Department um, to engage the law firm Ropes and Gray LLP on a pro bono basis uh, to determine whether and how the city should could best use blockchain technology to streamline property recordation. Um, RMP has a unique experience working with municipalities that are interested in exploring the use of blockchain for this purpose. However, we have uh, discovered after doing due diligence that RMP is currently representing a private asset management client in negotiations with the Baltimore City Police and Fires Employees Retirement System. Um, and while uh, BCPRE RS has its own in-house counsel involved in that negotiation, and neither I nor other attorneys within the law department anticipate being involved. We did want to dis uh, disclose this um, and, and seek approval from the ethics board. Um, so uh, we, we did lay out a, a memorandum, but I'm here to answer any questions. I don't want to read that in its entirety because it's there. But if there are any questions, um, I'm here to, to answer that, but at no time, uh, in, would I would I would wall myself off um, as well as anyone else that it would have to do with the the blockchain technology. But if there are any other questions or concerns, I'll be happy to um, answer those for this board. No, I don't have any questions. I numbers. I don't have any questions um, except for just for clarification internally for the board. Are That's they right. required to submit a gift solicitation waiver form? For this purpose, the way that I understand it, um, similarly, is it wouldn't necessarily fall under the waiver that uh, there's the you can see the ethics law. There's the one exception that specifically for I said regulation R O six two six point one. That's for a waiver where you are requesting to solicit for a charitable or governmental function. This would fall under that other um, exception there, which would be or upon approval by the board. So that's so this is just. What we did in the past is we sent a letter and the board decided their own um, your conditions. For example, you may require to file a report after six months, um, or you may require that they disclose certain information. So that's up to you all. Um, and there's a sample one and, and that with, with BCRP and that goes through what the board um, required of them. In that case, I don't have any questions and I just appreciate you disclosing the conflict. So um, yeah, thank you. Absolutely, ma'am. Just in full transparency, we just wanted to cover all of our bases here because we do feel like they are offering a, a, a tremendous um, viable uh, uh, service to the city um, that we would be able to utilize. But I just wanted to be completely transparent and we did our due diligence and we just wanted to make sure that this ethics board knew about that um, before we pursued it. Thank you. Really appreciate that. All right, do we want to go ahead and move on that this time? Oh. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I go ahead and, and move that we approve the uh, gift solicitation waiver request for pro bono services to Ropes and Gray LLC to the Baltimore City Law Department. Second. All right, all in favor of that action, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. The motion carries. Thank have you so holiday. much and have a wonderful holiday. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. All Thank right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And Ms. Williams, how are you? Hey, good afternoon. How are you? How's everyone doing? We're doing great. You're here uh, for the Thanksgiving dinner distribution uh, waiver and uh, Toys for Tots? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Then, if there's no objection, we'll move into old business. All right. Thank you. We'll start, start with the uh, Mayor Scott's happy Thanksgiving dinner 
distribution, char charitable government else to list. Yes, solicitation, <laughs> waiver application. Thank I you. Just one quick point. I'm over in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see me yet. This is Mar. We had emails. <laughs> um, I just wanted to clarify that you, the board approved it via yeah. email. Yeah. So this, she's just here to provide some more information about the waivers. And so that's part of our public session. Great. Yeah, we we're too late for Thanksgiving. So luckily, <laughs> we, got, we got the vote in quicker than that. So uh, you want to tell us about, about the Thanksgiving uh, distribution? Sure. The, the thanks and thank thank you all so much. I appreciate it. The Thanksgiving distribution um, was held on Saturday, uh, November nineteenth, and the mayor and his cabinet members actually delivered um, Thanksgiving dinner to. There were a total of one hundred families. Fifty of the families came from the Baltimore City Public Schools, and the other fifty came from. Um, clients who were referred by the Community Action Partnership Center. So these were city residents who were uh, facing challenges with, you know, paying their rent as well as paying their utility bills. Um, the the meals were um, your typical Thanksgiving dinner. Um, they had turkey, all the sides. They had even had pound cake and rolls to go with their uh, to go with their dinners. And um, the families, uh, we actually received some feedback from them, from some of the families, though, uh, through the Mayor's Office of Children and Family Services, and they were very appreciative because many of them are, I mean, they are facing challenges this year. So um, all 100 families were were served. And then, uh, likewise, voice for Tots and uh, City Hall tree lighting. So the tree lighting was held a week ago from today, last Wednesday, right in front of City Hall. Um, it was fabulous. Um, the U.S. Marines was there. Um, this is their 75th year of providing toys for children in need. They service the ch uh, children um, here in Baltimore City. And uh, we had uh, about, there were six Baltimore City public schools that performed dances. They sang. Uh, attendees who came there, they did bring some toys um, that were given to the presented by the mayor to the Marines on stage for the Toys for Tots. And we had hot beverages, hot cocoa, we had soup, and we had candy. So it was really festive. And the wonderful thing about it this year, it was actually live streamed on WJZ TV. And they are broadcasting it. So if you missed out on it, you get a chance to check it out. It was a really nice event for the for Baltimore City. Thank you so much, Ms. Williams. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Sounds like it was okay. wonderful. Mm -hmm. and, and we previously yeah. approved this as well. Yes, there's no yeah. action required. Um, thank you for explaining those to us, um, Marvel Williams. Sure, thank you. And, and I appreciate it. The, um, and Mar has been, I just want to say, Mar has been really helpful um, with the, I've been here for a while. I wasn't aware of the changes. So now that I know, um, I really appreciate it, your time, and I will make sure that I am timely in the future <laughs> with my applications and my waiver re requests. So thank you all so much, you and know, have a good holiday. Thank you for complimenting Mara. We, we, we know she's here. We appreciate it. Yeah. Mara's been on it, trust me. <laughs> Take care. Have a very happy holiday. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, let's uh, go reviewing the schedules and agenda. We we got 40 minutes, people. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's the schedules and agenda. <laughs> All right, um, we're still recording. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's a good time to tell you now that uh, per the Open Meetings Act, the board discloses that it adjourned its virtual open meeting on November 9th, 2022, to enter into an administrative session at approximately 3.09 p.m. All board members were present. Members discussed administrative matters, including complaints. So um, before we move to the minutes, I just want to say how exciting it is to have our first live in-person meeting here in City Hall for the Ethics Board since prior to COVID-19, since uh, I guess March, I mean, uh, January of 2020, possibly, maybe February. So it's nice to be back and uh, we're glad you can be here with us as well. All right. Uh, so, uh, written minutes for November 9th, 2022 public session. I didn't see any uh, corrections or edits to be suggested. Any discussion on the minutes? I'm going to wait for it. Second that motion. All in favor of approving the uh, written November 9th, 2022 public meeting minutes signify by saying aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. All right. That uh, minutes are approved. We'll move on to our officer's update. 
All right. Um, one quick thing with your statement concerning November session, there were actually three board members present. I had noted oh. all board members. That's just one correction. It was just fair enough. Yeah, yeah, three board members were present. Okay. Exactly um, right. All right, so quickly I'll go through metrics. Um, 17 people completed the ethics training in October, 38 no of November. So we have 174 people have taken the ethics training in these past few months since July. Um, 48 help desk requests in September. The majority were ethics inquiries. So of this 48, 30 were for substantive guidance. So it was a busy month. I feel like it was busy. Wow. Yes, and that brings our total 291. We had four new ethics complaints. Um, and we will discuss those <laughs> during our administrative session, as well as one advisory opinion request. And then um, gift solicitations, we have um, two were approved by the ethics board in the meantime, which um, Marjorie Williams just discussed, and then one request from the law department, two campaigns expired, and we received nine reports. Two of those are final reports and seven were interim reports, so um, everyone is very timely filing their gift solicitation reports. Financial disclosures, we are currently asking for uh, agencies, 55 agencies and boards to send us their updated lists. I sent out a request in last week, so we're just waiting for those back. So by January, we'll know all of our required filers for 2023. And for lobbying, um, annual reports are due by the end of January, so that's just something to have on your radar. And that's it. Wonderful. Chris? Um, it's been a busy month. Um, we've uh, had a number of high visibility events, uh, including a letter of the board by the board to the mayor in regard to the city council vote regarding the decrease investing period for the uh, employee death, elected official retirement system. Um, I think most of the other contributions that I would have to make would be for the administrators. Thank you. All right, it looks like we've got the uh, old business uh, sustainability plan waiver. That's um, so the board approved that waiver at the last meeting. That has since received DOE endorsement. So I just want to label it now. That's good to go. All right, great. All right, uh, unless there's any other business in this session, then I move that we adjourn our public session. Have very happy holidays, and it's always it's good to be back in City Hall. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're adjourned.